I love that you're willing to travel in a particular way. I've always, I mean, I know a lot of people who are like, yeah, they got the traveling bug. I have the version where I kind of want to be somebody when mm -hmm. I travel. I'm open to it. And I want there to be like, like my driver that's there, that yeah. is at the airport for me and then, and then opens the world to me. And I want to have the, <laughs> the challenge of wanting to like, oh, the burden of, oh, I have to escape my driver and all of these up and then, and then go hang out and like catch a train to Greece and just hang out on a beach to escape all of the, the luxury. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not, not the same as like, I'm wearing one pair of shoes and I have a backpack and I'm just gonna <laughs> like eat bread for four weeks. That's not the version of travel that I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. But. My versions have changed a lot over the years as well, and I've yeah. reflected a lot on that. Like, you know, when I first moved to Europe when I was like 19, I think the most expensive thing I took with me was a skateboard, and the second most expensive thing I had was a disc man. Yes. And there were iPods out then back then, but I had a disc man <laughs> because I was like, ain't hey, nobody is gonna steal my disc man. <laughs> um, That's brilliant. And I was hipster about my music back then. Work. And when somebody did steal my disc man in a hostel in Scotland, I was so much more mad about the CD that was stolen um, than I was, which was like a CD a friend burned for me, and it was oh. like an album, not even like a mixtape oh, or something. Really? So at the time, you know, we had Napster and all of those right. fun things, which nobody from the millennial like region would understand what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. But you know, our own versions of stealing music. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just, music was less accessible, it felt like. So like now I could find that album again in a heartbeat if right. I just looked it up. But yeah. back then it felt like, how am I ever gonna get that album back? Yeah. Um, and yeah, my $10 disc man was really not a big deal. But anyways, I guess my point is back then, traveling was like, I, I just went, you mm -hmm. know? And I remember, uh, you know, at one point running out of money and being like, it's cool, I can just sleep in a park for a little bit in yes. like Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> and this hostel manager was like, no, you're gonna get a job soon. Like, I'll just put you in a bed for a little bit. He's like, take some money and eat. And I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. He's like, no, I can tell you're not eating enough. Like, and yeah, it was just like this very bare bones um, kind of scenario. And then when I was in Brazil, like trying to document the World Cup, um, I mean, I came with thousands of dollars of equipment mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like I, I had a Brazilian cell, uh, smartphone so I could keep in touch with uh, kind of like where things were going on in the moment with like current events so I could know when to catch a riot um, yeah. so I could post stuff on Twitter in like the moment. Like, and so it was just this, it's like I remember one point reflecting on it being like I got to be conscious of you know, do I have insurance for this gear? Like, what if somebody tries to rob me? Like, they've got, like, my life's worth of equipment. And it was just like, how did we get here? Yeah. Like, like from being just, like, this, you know, like, bum mentality of, like, I'll just skateboard around Europe and not worry about it, to, like, <laughs> I'm a wannabe professional with, like, a whole bunch of, like, expensive equipment that if you rob it, I'll cry. <laughs>